Hey everybody, Michael Vincent, Noble Logistics News and Entertainment, The Stench Free Zone. Returns are here to stay, as the inability for brick and mortar retailers to operate over the pandemic caused an exponential growth and explosion in e-commerce, so has it caused a seemingly unmanageable and rather costly exponential growth in returns. The returns from this past holiday season promise to be a record-breaking, if not bottom line, breaking for retailers, a 63% spike. Part of the problem is bracketing. That's when consumers order the same thing in multiple colors and sizes with the intent of utilizing the free returns option. But e-commerce is getting smart and not offering a lot of free returns anymore, especially during the holiday seasons. The question is, can the returns process be used to the advantage of the retailers or not? Steve Ropp, COO at GoTRG, a company that processes returns for the likes of <clears throat> Walmart, Sam's, <clears throat> Lowe's, etc., says in supply chain brain that e-commerce shoppers are now turning to more expensive items that they didn't need during the lockdowns, shoes, apparel, makeup, um, handbags, and the like. These much more expensive items are causing returns as a percentage of sales to escalate. He suggests not to penalize the consumers or make returns more difficult, but to utilize the returns and returns process to bring customers back into the brick and mortar stores and increase sales via return channels. Brilliant idea. And the likes of Kohl's and Amazon already offer a 5% to 10% in-store coupon for bringing your returns back to the brick and mortar store, even if they were purchased online. Here's a fact for you to chew on. From December 15th through the 24th, BOPIS or buy online pickup in store retailers sold seven times more than those that did not offer the service. Utilizing your returns logistics network to your advantage as a retailer, the opportunity is there.